Welcome to Electron Online. In the previous videos, we found the heat conductivity equation for a single layered cylinder. Now, how do we find the equation for a multi layered cylinder? For this one, for example, it has two layers. Each layer has its own heat conductivity constant, K1 and K2. The inner radius is A, the outer radius is B, and the boundary between the two layers, the radius is C. Notice that we have a temperature inside TA, on the outside TB, and at the boundary TC. Yes, K1 and K2 in this case are indeed constants, and we can write the equation that the heat flow to the first layer must equal the heat flow to the second layer, must equal the heat flow through the cylinder. They have to be constants. And for a single layer, we derived this equation before. The difference is the temperature divided by the denominator, which we call the heat resistance. So how do we find the equation for the, for the, the heat flow, Q dot, through a multi-layered cylinder? Well, we know that Q1, Q.1 must equal Q.2, so let's start with that principle. Q.1 must equal Q.2. And let's write the equivalent equation with that general principle. So let's say that Q.1 must therefore equal the delta t between the inner layer and the boundary. So we can say that's the difference in temperature between Ta and Tc. So the difference in temperature for the inner layer divided by the denominator, which will be the natural log of C over A, all divided by 2 pi Kl. And that we can set equal to the difference in temperature to the second layer, which is Tc minus Tb, all divided by the natural log of the ratio of B over C divided by 2 pi Kl. And I think my pen is beginning to die. So let's see if this one has ink. Okay, now we have two fractions that equal to each other. Let's make, the, let's make this line a little bit bigger, like so. And here, these are what we call the two heat resistances of the two sides of the equation. Oh, and very important, what we need to do here is make sure that this is the K for the first layer and the K for the second layer, because they are not the same K, they are two different Ks. If they're not different, then of course we don't have multi-layers, it all would be the same material in the same layer. All right, now let's go ahead with this principle. If we have two fractions that equal to each other, A over B equals C over D, well, if those two ratios are equal to each other, we can then also add the two numerators and write it as A plus C divided by B plus D. So if A over B equals C over D, then we can add the two numerators and the two denominators together, and we still have the same ratio. All right, if that's true, and that is indeed true without proving, we can use the same principle for what we have over there. We can add these two numerators together. So if this is equal to Q dot, because that's what we're saying right here, because these are all constants, we can then come back over here and we can write that Q dot therefore must equal the sum of the two numerators, which is TA minus TC plus TC minus TB, all divided by the sum of these two, which is the natural log of C over A, divided by 2 pi K1L plus the natural log of B over C, divided by 2 pi K2L. And then you realize when you look at the numerator that the TCs cancel out, so we can write that Q dot is equal to the difference between the temperature at A and the temperature at B, which is the inside and the outside temperature, divided by the sum of these two quantities right here. And that would be the natural log of C over A divided by 2 pi K1L plus the natural log of B over C divided by 2 pi K2L. And notice again that these are the two heat resistances of the two layers, and the numerator is simply the difference between the inside and the outside temperature. We may want to write it like this. We could say that the heat flow, Q dot, through the multi-layer cylinder is simply equal to the delta T between A and B, the total difference in the temperature between the inside and the outside divided by the sum of the 
heat resistances of each individual layer. So that would be the natural log of C over A divided by 2 pi K1L plus the natural log of B over C divided by 2 pi K2L. And let's go ahead and box up this equation. Now notice that this is the equation for two layers, but you can see the only difference that would happen if we had three or four or five layers that would simply would keep adding the heat resistances of each individual layer in the denominator and that the numerator simply remains the total difference in the temperature between the inside and the outside of the cylinder. And that's how we calculate the heat flow Q dot dQ dt through the sides of a cylinder, a multi-layer cylinder in this case.